Hello friends, for those of you that are new to the channel, you may have noticed that in the playlist section of this channel, there are a couple of playlists filled with videos about neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are sort of like hormones that communicate between the cells of our brain or our nervous system, which are called neurons. See, each so when two cells want to communicate in the nervous system, they're called neurons. The presynaptic, between the neurons is something called a synapse, which is where they communicate. The presynaptic neuron sends a hormone over to the postsynaptic neuron, and this hormone activates a receptor on that neuron, which then tells the neuron something to do. There's a communication going along. So we've covered the acetylcholine neurotransmitter, which is the most important neurotransmitter for human concentration and memory. We've covered the serotonin neurotransmitter, which is a very important neurotransmitter. It's part of the monoamine neurotransmitters. And today we will be covering the most important uh, inhibitory neurotransmitter. I'll get into what that is, which is GABA. Ahead of time, I wanna do some housekeeping notes. So I want you guys to notice something. In my previous two series, I had uh, di differing levels of citations. So in the acetylcholine series, I actually put citations into blog posts that I made with each video. But this took me a lot of time and I noticed that maybe this was a little too detailed. Not very many people want to read these citations or get into the, the details of the, of the issue. The reason I have so many citations is not just because I want to be sure of what I'm talking about, but because basically all these series are playing, uh, are like sort of like chapters in a book I plan to write in the future on cognitive enhancement, which will deal with each neurotransmitter system and the tools available. So, but the serotonin series, I tried to avoid that because there was just so much uh, information I wanted to impart. So I just put screenshots of my citations on the videos. Again, that's not very helpful and it takes me a lot of time. So I decided this time, I'm just not gonna put screenshots, I'm not gonna put the citations up. I actually have 430 something citations. If you guys have any questions during the series about any point I make individually, we'd like a citation about, just ask the question, ask for a citation, and I'll, and I'll give it to you in the comment section below. Another note is that most of the videos in the series, I'm gonna try my best, now I don't know how, how well I'll do honestly, but I'm gonna try my best to make these videos as short as possible, so that they don't get too detailed. For those of you that are not you know, particularly interested in opt in really understanding the brain or optimizing cognitive performance, but you just want to understand what do I need to know about GABA. So I'm going to try to keep these a bit shorter so that everybody can get something out of it. So anyway, without further ado, let's get started with GABA, which is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter of the nervous system. So what is an inhibitory neurotransmitter? There's a hormone that is excitatory, which causes reactions and events to occur in the body. And there's a hormone that is inhibitory, which prevents uh, reactions or limits uh, events and behaviors in the biology of the body. So for example, one of the excitatory hormones of the, or sorry, excitatory neurotransmitters of the nervous system is dopamine. Another one that's very famous and the most important one is glutamate, which is an amino acid. GABA is also an amino acid. It is an inhibitory one. It is sort of the polar opposite of glutamate. So before I get started, let me tell you a quote, a very famous quote about GABA, which was, uh, I think, uh, said at the turn of the 20th century by Sir John Eccles, who wrote a um, landmark uh, book on neuroscience. He said, I always think that inhibition is a sculpturing process. The inhibition, as it were, chisels away at the mass of excitatory action and gives a more specific form to the neuronal performance at every stage of synaptic relay. Inhibition is really important. It's sort of something like Bruce Lee described before. Uh, I'm sure many people familiar with, the, with Bruce Lee will know what I'm talking about, in which I, I don't remember the wording he described, but basically saying that mastery is not in adding to something, but in taking away all that is not necessary. So GABA is what takes away certain things. So GABA is a neurotransmitter that's very important when you talk about anxiety or when you talk about calmness, when you talk about uh, epilepsy, shaking, tremors, and even health. So let me give you in this video a little bit of an introduction to GABA. Number one, it is the main neurotransmitter actively involved in about a third of the neurons in our central nervous systems. It is made from glutamate, the excitatory amino, uh, amino acid neurotransmitter. Glutamate is converted into GABA by something called GAD, which is glutamate decarboxylase, which is an enzyme. Uh, glutamate decarboxylase turns uh, glutamate into specifically gamma amino butyric acid, which is GABA. Next, GABA 
GABA's conversion from glutamate happens with two isoforms of GAD. One is called GAD65 and one is called GAD67. GAD, so there are two isoforms of this enzyme that basically creates GABA in the nervous system. GABA can also be, by the way, this is a little nerdy and detailed, but it can also be synthesized in other places. But the most important thing is this conversion from glutamate, which happens through GAD. There are two isoforms of GAD, GAD65 and GAD67. GAD67 is more available in places that are important than GAD65. I do not believe that there are any selective drugs that can car target GAD65 over GAD67 or anything like that. Why would you want to target GAD? Because, for example, if you could increase GAD's activity, your body will produce more GABA per the amount of glutamate that it has. So it will alter the excitatory to inhibitory ratio, which is really important and something that we want to talk about a lot when we talk about cognitive performance. So, oh, by the way, mice that are uh, knockout mice, which means transgenic mice, mice whose genes, sorry about that, mice whose genes have been altered such that they are missing GAD65 or GAD67, simply, although there are other ways of synthesizing GABA, simply don't have much GABAergic activity at all. So GAD65 and GAD67 are really the crucial elements there in the synthesis of GABA. I also want to mention to you guys that most of the GABA, most of the GABA in the nervous system is made by uh, small inhibitory interneurons that have basically small projectile areas. Most of them. There are some with longer projectile. Projectile areas means like they have ag they don't have long axons that can communicate this neurotransmitter across the brain. Axons are like these these long like tentacle like things that neurotransmitters cross across in the brain. Uh, I also wanted to mention that what happens when GABA is synthesized. So a, a, a presynaptic neuron will release GABA to the postsynaptic neuron, the other cell. After this happens. So oh, actually, before that happens, how will a presynaptic neuron get GABA? It'll get it from something called the vesicular amino acid transporter, VIAAT. VIAAT will take GABA and load it into the, uh, what do they call it, the synaptic vesicle, which is in the presynaptic area, neuron. The presynaptic neuron will then release GABA, and GABA will go into the postsynaptic neuron, at which point uh, an array, actually specifically four kinds of GABA transporters, will take GABA out of the postsynaptic neuron and either leave it in the, in the extracellular space or try to get it back into the synapse. So those transporters are called the GABA transporter 1, which is called the uh, GAT1, the GABA transporter 2, the GABA transporter 3, this is GAT1, GAT2, GAT3, and there's also the betaine GABA transporter, the BGT1. So those are all the transporters that then move it out. If you guys recall from our serotonin series, you'll remember that what are SSRIs? SSRIs actually are things that inhibit the serotonin transporter. Serotonin is actually transported by two different transporters. SSRIs mainly focus on one, which is called CERT. So GABA has GAT, but it has GAT1, GAT2, GAT3, and BGT1, the betaine, GAT, uh, the betaine GABA transporter. So there's that. And then finally, the last thing is, what happens when GABA is in the extracellular space? It's, out, it's been taken out by GAT or, GAT or GAT1, 2, 3 or BGT1. And now it's in the extracellular space, which means it's in the brain, but not in, in between two neurons. What happens when it's there? Well, it can be degraded back into glutamate by the GABA transaminase enzyme, which is also called GABA-T. So what do you have to remember out of all this? You have GAD, which was... If you remember GAD65 and GAD67, which synthesizes GABA from glutamate. And other than GAD, GABA-T does the opposite, turns it back into glutamate. Then within the synapse, you have the VIAAT, which loads it in the presynaptic cleft. And then you have the GABA transporters, which take it out. So those are the main things that I wanted you guys to understand in this video. Uh, I hope uh, maybe this was a little bit dry, but as you guys will see in the future videos, this neurotransmitter is really, really important for our health and for our uh, cognitive function. And I think there will be a lot of tips and things to learn along the way in this series. So I hope you guys stay tuned with me every day and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for watching.